All right, algebra students. Uh, this is the third star skills test that you are taking this spring semester. And we will begin with number one. It's this first part right here. When you ever, whenever you see this in a problem, it, it, it could confuse you, okay? This is not part of the question. This part here is the rule. So this is an exponent rule. So if you're trying to figure out just what on earth that is, it's an exponent rule. And so it's saying if you have uh, these properties right here, then you can apply them to your actual problem. So it means if you have more than one base, you multiply the bases together and add their exponents. And if you have coefficients, you multiply the coefficients. So let's break that down. Right here, you have 6x squared times y and 7x to the fourth times y. So what we'll do is right out here, I'll rewrite that. Uh, 6x squared y. Okay, it says here product. What does that mean? Product means multiply. Okay, so if I'm trying to figure out just what on earth I'm doing, I'm multiplying 6x squared y times 7x to the fourth y. Now, okay, let's move on to step two. Um, so we multiply these coefficients. 6 and 7. So 6 times 7 is 42. Now I'm going to multiply the x's. x squared times x to the fourth is x to the sixth. So it's x to the squared 2 plus 4. x to the 2 plus 4, that's x to the sixth. And now I have the y's. y to the 1 times y to the 1 is y to the 1 plus 1, which is y squared, y to the 2. So this is the solution I'm looking for. Again, I have not looked at the answer choices yet. Now I'll go look for them. Boom. I'm looking there, right there, for A. Okay. So number 1 is A. Number 2. Given a slope of m equals 4 to the minus 1 and a y-intercept of b equals 4, write a linear equation in standard form. Okay, and now once again, you're, you're given the rule. Recall that a to the negative 1 equals 1 over a, and that the standard form is ax plus by equals c. All right, so the first thing we have to look at is how do we work with the slope like this, with this weird exponent? You know, remember, we'll start with this form, y equals mx plus b. That's the slope-intercept form of a line. And so that m right there, we've got to figure out, because it's 4 to the negative 1. Well, look, if we have a to the negative 1, it's 1 over a. So if 4 takes the place of a, then 4 to the negative 1 must be drum roll, 1 over 4, okay? We are also given b. We're given the y-intercept is 4. So now I can just rewrite this by plugging in y equals 1 over 4x plus 4. And I can hear you saying, wait a minute, it has to be in standard form. Okay, sure. So we'll put this in standard form by moving the x over to the left side by subtracting 1 4th x from both sides. 1 4th x and minus 1 4th x cancels it out on the right. And I'll just keep moving to the, to the right here because I'm, I don't have a lot of space. So now rewritten, this is negative 1 4th x. Uh, negative 1 4th x plus y 
equals 4. So is this AX plus BY equals C where A, B, and C are whole numbers and A is positive? Nope. What can I multiply this entire equation by to make this go away, the fraction, and make it positive? Well, I can multiply it by negative 4. See, if I multiply everything by negative 4, the logic goes, that will get rid of this fraction and the negative, leaving a positive x. Okay, so negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. Positive 4 divided by 4 is 1. So you would just have x. What we're essentially doing right here is distributing the negative 4 to every term inside the parentheses. So what have I come up with here? I've got x. Now what's going to happen here? Negative 4 times positive y is negative 4y. And then negative 4 times 4 is, so equals, negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. So this is our standard form. x minus 4y equals negative 16. And actually, I've, I think I've kind of covered it up here. C is x minus 4y equals negative 16. I covered it up when I drew those lines, but that's what it is, C. If you are watching this video right now, okay? If you are watching this video right now, I want to see this on your paper, right? I'm going to write down a, a word right here, and this word must be at the top of your paper, okay? Must be in this box right here at the top of your paper when you turn your, your makeup work back in so I know that you watch this video, all right? So this is where the secret word goes. And I'm going to write that secret word, and then I'm going to get rid of it. So the secret word is, ready? You see it? Okay. I hope you see it because it is now going to disappear. And it's one of those things if the secret word is not there when you turn in your paper and you have no work shown and all of a sudden your grade changed from a failing grade to 100, then I'm going to be very interested to know how, in fact, you acquired uh, so much knowledge, okay, without cheating. So I want to see this work. If you're going to play along with this video, at least do me a favor and write down the work that I'm writing down. Thank you. All right, let's move on. Uh, baseball fans can buy tickets and seat for the lower deck or upper deck of the stadium. Okay, so I'm just going to, before I continue, I'm looking down here, I see it's a system of linear inequalities. You got the inequality symbols, system of linear inequalities. So, what, have I, what am I dealing with here? Baseball fans can buy tickets for seats in the lower deck. There's one variable. So that's one type of ticket, lower deck tickets. Here's another type, upper deck tickets of the stadium. So lower deck or upper deck. Tickets for the lower deck cost $42. So here's what I'm going to do. I've got lower deck and upper deck. Okay, I know that they'll be added together and there will be some price for each of them. And then here there will be some inequality symbol and then there'll be some total. That's how these problems typically go. Write this. Now fill it in. Ticket, okay, ticket prices for the lower deck cost $42 each. 
Okay, that's important information. Put a 42 right here. Ticket prices for the upper deck are 75% the cost of the tickets for the lower deck. All right, so if you look, I'm gonna before we jump to the calculator, I want to show you something. What is 75% as a fraction? Okay, if we were really going to do this without a calculator, 75% equals 3 fourths. So really, we're multiplying 3 fourths times the cost of a ticket, which is 42 over 1. So how can I, how can I do this? Well, let's prime factor 42. If you really want to know how to do this properly, prime factor 42. And if you divide 42 by 2, you get 2 and 21. So uh, now we have 3 times 2 times 21 all over 4 prime factored is 2 times 2. So I can cancel one of the 2's, leaving just, here I'm gonna, my, I'm gonna run out of space here, so this becomes 3 times 21 over 2. Well, what's 3 times 21? Let's see, 20, 40, 60, plus 3. 63 over 2. This equals 63 uh, over 2. Well, what is that? Okay, 2 goes into 6 3 times. That's 6. Okay, subtract, that's 0 and 3. 2 goes into 3 one time, and that leaves two. Okay, one left over, point, drop another zero. Two goes into 10 five times. So I got 3150. So if you didn't have a calculator, that would be one way to go. And so the upper deck tickets are 75% of the cost of the lower deck tickets. That means the upper deck tickets are $31.50. $31.50. Okay, which inequality represents all the possible combinations of x, the number of tickets for the lower deck? Okay, so lower deck is now becoming x. And y, the number of tickets for the upper deck? Y. That a person can buy for no more than. No more than. Let's uh, mark that one down. What is no more than? No more than is less than or equal to. No more than, no more than what? $800. Put 800 right here. And I've got 42x plus 3150y less than or equal to 800. Go to the answers. 42x plus 3150y less than or equal to 800. The answers B. Okay. Number four. Number four and number five are identical, I mean, in, in structure. We have to simplify these. All right, so if we're dividing four by three m cubed over two, it really means we are, and for those of you watching, you see me using this protractor. I'm trying to keep my line straight. You should be using a protractor or some straight edge. Even a credit card would work. That's four over one times the reciprocal. When you divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. Uh, 4 over 1 times 2 over 3 m cubed. Okay, so now let's multiply that out. That is 8 over 3 m cubed. Now that can't be simplified, so we just see the answer burst forth now over here I've got 3x cubed over 4 divided by 5 over 4x cubed okay so that's again rewrite the whole thing 3x cubed over 4 now think about what divide means multiply by the reciprocal right so now we're going to multiply by 4x cubed over 5 and now on the top, you have to know to multiply, you've got bases are the same, multiply the coefficients. 3 times 4 is 12. 
Now, the, these two bases, x cubed, x cubed, you add those together. So x cubed times x cubed is x to the sixth over 4 times 5, which is 20. Now, how do I know how to reduce? Well, prime factor, the numerator and the denominator. I got 3 times 2 times 2 times x to the 6th. And then in the denominator, I've got, let's see, 2 times 2 times 5. Okay, so I can just cancel out these 2's. And I'm left with 3x to the 6th over 5. Well, I see that's the answer here, D. Again, if you think I'm going to give you credit for this homework, you need to write this down. Okay, so pause the video and make sure your work is reflected here. Stuff isn't free. Number six, consider the dotted line. All right, so guys, I'm an active reader. That makes That's what good math students do. They read with purpose. Consider the dotted line. So I'm already, I'm, I'm underlining and highlighting as a quadratic function whose slope is one. So obviously this is gonna be important. So which one is the uh, dotted line quadratic with the slope of one? This one. Okay, get yourself a highlighter and use it. Now, consider the second narrower curve. Okay, so here's my narrower curve. That's this curve. What do you think happened to the slope to make the filled in second line? Okay, what happened to the slope? It's squeezed. You see that? It's squeezed tighter. Now, what makes a slope be squeezed tighter? Let's see. The slope was doubled. The slope is the same. The slope was divided in half. Or the slope was quadrupled. Well, let's say you didn't know. Okay, let me use this calculator here and clear the memory. All right. Go to y equals and type in x squared. That'll give you the parent function of the quadratic and just graph it. There it is, x squared. Okay, that is the dotted line, all right? So that's the dotted line. I wonder if I can change the line style. Yeah, I can. Okay, so I'll even make it a dotted line. There we go. And now for y2, I'm going to try doubling the slope. Well, how do I double the slope? It, it helps to remember what I would have to manipulate to double the slope. Here's the general form of a quadratic. ax squared plus bx plus c. This is the slope. Okay, so all I've got in my equation is something x squared. So let's try doubling the slope, 2x squared, because it's 1x squared now. Let's try that. Bingo, all right? It looks identical to this. The slope was doubled. All right. Number seven, consider the filled in line. Oh, now they're playing games. Okay, before they had me focusing on that dotted line, now I'm looking at the filled in line. Which one is that? This one here? Okay. All right. That's the quadratic function x squared. So I'm actually going to write uh, f of x equals x squared. What must you do to this function to shift the entire curve to the left, as shown by the dotted line? Subtract 2 from every x value. Multiply every x value by 2. 
divide every x value by 2 or add 2 to every x value. Okay. Well, we what we're really trying to make a decision about is whether we're going to do f of, let me write it here actually, subtract 2 from every x value. That's f of x minus 2. Multiply every x value by 2. f of 2x. Divide every x value by 2. f of x divided by 2. Add 2 to every x value. f of x plus 2. Okay? Well, what does that really mean? Well, what it means is that before I plug this in, I'm going to take whatever my x value is. Here, I'll show you what I mean. So there's the origin point. It's the vertex of this parent function. 0, comma 0. All right? So if I'm going to plug that in to my parent function f of x, I want to know what y is when x is 0. I'll try it, f of 0. Well, that's 0 squared, so that's just 0. So I get the coordinates 0, comma, 0, which corresponds to what I see there. Let me find another point where things cross. Here's one, 2, comma, 4, all right? So I want to know what is f of 2. Well, that equals 2 squared, so I come up with that's 2 squared is 4, so I come up with 2 comma 4. Well now, if I'm going to uh, subtract 2 from both x values, let's see if I end up with some point on this line here. Let me try f of 2 plus 2. Well, what's 2 plus 2? It's 4. So, in other words, okay, f of 4 equals 4 squared, which is 16. So when f is 4, y is 16. So that is 4 comma 16. Do I see that on my dotted line? So here, x is 4. Well, it doesn't go out that far, does it? Where here, x is 4, y is 16. All right, so how about another number? Let's try f of 0 minus 2. Okay, then we're going to subtract 2 from every x value. I'm just trying things out. So now I've got f of minus 2. All right, so here's minus 2. What is y when x is negative 2? Well, what is negative 2 squared? It's 4. So when x is negative 2, if I'm using this model here, I've got negative 2 comma 4. But that's not what I observe here. Let me try f of x plus 2, this one over here. Let me try that whole thing over again. Now I'm going to try f of 0 plus 2. So that's f of 2. Well, now I'm at x equals 2. What is y when x is 2? Well, y is 2 squared which is 4. So at 2, what is y? y is 4. Okay, yep, I see that there. But I want to know what's happening here. All right. Let's um, go to the calculator. Let's see if we can create this problem visually, right? So I'm going to put in x squared for my first graph. 
that uh, needs to be the solid line. There. Solid line right there. I want it to shift over two spaces to the left. Okay. So go back here. Uh, we'll put in here open parentheses x plus 2 close parentheses squared. And I'll make this one a dotted line. And let's see what that does. Bingo. Okay. So it, what I'm what I'm getting at here is the I guess the um, intuition of a human being is that x minus two is going to shift the graph to the left, but that's not right. Okay. X minus 2 is going to shift the graph to the right. But that's not what we witness. We want we see the graph shifting to the left. So we see X plus 2. This is called uh, the translation of the function. It's moving. So X plus 2. Right? So that's what we see. And this is a shift to the left. And you can always say by how much, by that number. Shift to the left by 2, shift to the right by 2. We want to see something shifted to the left by 2. Every x value. Okay, so the question is, well, how do I know how to do this if I don't want to do all this nonsense? Just look what happens. So here's an x value here, and here's an x value here. What happened to the x value? Okay, it shifted to the left by 2. All right, so f of x plus 2. Make sense? So um, the really the best or easiest way anyway is just if you don't know, try them out, and you'll find it. You'll find it. All right, moving on. That was kind of a complicated problem. Whoa, whoa. so the answer is uh, add two to every x value. Okay, so Isaiah climbs 12 feet on a ladder and shoots a basketball into the air. The ball lands six feet away from him. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm drawing a little graph here, right? You can't see the graph. That would be helpful. There we go. So I'm drawing a little graph here, and I'm going to put this point at 12. Okay, so this is Isaiah's starting height. He climbs up on a ladder. So this must be the ladder right here. Isaiah climbs up on this thing, and he shoots a basketball, and it lands six feet away from him. Right? So it lands over here at six feet. And so it, if you look at this, it's modeling this quadratic trajectory like that. Not a very good drawing. The, my computer program did it better, but that's basically it. And it's saying that uh, Isaac's basketball can be modeled by Q of X equals negative X squared. I'm just writing what I'm looking at here. Plus 4X plus 12. Negative X squared plus 4X plus 12. Now imagine Shauna kicks a volleyball from the ground. So it starts at the origin point. This is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. Okay, this is the q of x right here. Now, Shauna starts here at ground level. She kicks a volleyball, and it goes up into the air, falls back down, hits the ground four feet away, like this. Okay? That's Shauna's right there. And it's saying write a quadratic function that models the motion of Shauna's volleyball. 
include any zeros to maintain the quadratic form. Well, all right, so we need to think about something. Am I dealing with the goalposts pointed up or the goalposts pointed down? Just look at the shape of the graph. It's an upside down horseshoe, so I'm going with this one. That means I've got a negative slope. All right, now I know one of my zeros. I know both of my zeros. I've got a zero at zero comma zero and a zero at four comma zero. So I have x equals zero and x equals four for Shauna. Now I want to turn these into factors, right? So I have minus zero, x minus zero equals zero, or x equals zero, okay? Um, that means that the factor is x. There's the factor. And now here I've got x minus 4 minus 4. x minus 4 equals 0. So there's the factor. So here are my two factors. I've got x and x minus 4. So if I FOIL that out, I have x squared minus 4x. That's uh, x squared minus 4x. Only problem with that is that I'm missing the negative number. Okay, because it's right now this is a positive slope. Look, look at this graph right here. Let me uh, clear this guy. This is x squared minus 4x graphed. It's going to be upward sloping. See, so that's not right. I want it to be downward sloping. So I need to multiply the entire thing by negative 1. So I've got negative 1x squared, which is negative x squared. And then negative 1 times negative 4x is plus 4x. Let's see if that is the quadratic that I'm looking for. Let me try this, second insert, negative x squared, and then just change this to plus 4x. Bingo! Okay, I got what I wanted. My zeros are at 0 and 4, my solutions. This is the function I'm looking for. Now there's this missing c term, but that's just a 0. So this is Shauna's uh, quadratic right there, right? That's what you're looking for. Let's go find it. Negative x squared plus 4x plus 0, okay? A. Again, pause the video, write this down, watch it again, and think about what you would do on your calculator to check that. Okay. Next, number 9, consider the function f of x equals x squared as a dotted line, as the dotted line plotted below. Oh, I see. Some of you are telling me this dotted line, uh, this dotted line thing isn't there. You're right. It, it's not a dotted line. This is a typo, so it's solid line. It doesn't change the um, it doesn't change the uh, the way the problem works. It's just a little bit of a confusion point there. What do you anticipate the vertex will be of a function where every x value is decreased by three? All right. So what's the vertex of the current function? F of x equals x squared. There's the vertex. It's going to be the lowest point on the graph. So it's like the current vertex is 0, 0. So it says every x value is decreased by 3. f of x minus 3 or f of x plus 3. Okay, well, we have to kind of, we have to think about it, okay? So, 
I'm going to try out some values here. f of x minus 3, f of x plus 3. So here are my x values. We'll try 0, 1, 2, 3. Make a little table. Remember, the function is x squared. Okay. So I should probably make a column here for f of x over here. So we're going to, this will be our, our control group. This is the original function, f of x. So we'll try 0. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9, 1, 4, 9, 0, 1, 4, 9, 3, yep, we see it at 9, uh, good. Okay, so now, uh, where every x value is decreased by 3, okay, so let's try this. Um, what is 0 minus 3 squared? That's a negative 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. Okay, so these are the x values here. How about 1 minus 3 squared? 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. Okay, 2 minus 3, that's negative 1. Okay, negative 1 squared is 1. 3 minus 3 is 0. 0 squared is 0. Interesting, it's just the reverse of this one. This is 0, 1, 4, 9. This is 9, 4, 1, 0, x minus 3. How about x plus 3? Okay, 0 plus 3, 3 times 3 is 9. Okay, 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 squared is 16. 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 squared is 25. 3, square, 3 plus 3 is 9, 9 squared is 81. Okay, so do I see if I want to decrease each x value by 3, what would the function be? All right, so what I'm looking for is I want every x value. I'm trying to find what are called the lattice points, L-A-T-T-I-C-E. I want each of these points to be decreased by 3. Let me kind of show you what I mean so you can get a sense of how I keep solving these because I've, I think I've been doing a poor job of explaining it. I'm going to decrease every value by 3 visually. Maybe this works better for you. If this table made no sense, watch this. So now I'm going to decrease each of these dots by 3 on the x-axis. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Here, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Here, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Here, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Here. Okay, here, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. You see I've kind of, I've already got this blue line is already my function here. Okay, so what is the vertex of a function where every x value is decreased by 3? When we do this, okay, whoa. Is that what we do? I don't know. Let's see. The vertex of the function where every x value is decreased by 3 would be, uh, the vertex will shift to the left to form 0, 0, from 0, 0 uh, to negative 3, 0. Uh, that certainly appears to be what it did. The axis of symmetry will be x equals negative 3. Okay, here it looks like the axis of symmetry is indeed at negative 3. Both vertices will remain the same. No, that's obviously wrong. Or 
the vertex will shift to the right from 0 comma 0 to 3 comma 0. All right. Well, are we sure that what we're doing is correct? Every x value is decreased by 3. Is this what we see? When x is 3, is y 0? Okay, so I have to look. When x is 3, is y 0? No. So this is the function that they're plotting. Okay, when x is 2, y is 1. When x is 1, y is 4. Okay, when x is 0, y is 9. Is 9. Where is 0? Oops. So I think I should have been here. And then y is 9. So here we've got this function. So I just want to... I just want to be clear here. So um, it is not intuitive, ladies and gentlemen, what is happening. You kind of have to draw it. All right, so this is what we want. But what is this? Is this this? The blue line is not this. All right, so let's go over here. F of X plus 3. When X is 0... Okay, x is 0, y is 9. When x is 1, y is 16. Well, now we're way off the charts. Let's check these other points. How about this? When x is, why don't we try negative 1. Okay, when x is negative 1, that's right here. Okay y is what? 1 minus 3. Uh, negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. All right, so is that at, at 16? Nope. It's actually at 4. So let's check this one. So this is 16. That's not right. Let's check this one. f of x plus 3. Negative 1 plus 3 is negative 1, 0, 1, 2. So 2 squared is 4. So is y at 4 when x is negative 1 using this model? So I'm at negative 1. I go up. Yep, I'm right there. So this works. Do you see what 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 is happening here? Okay, so to get this picture, which is what we want, we have to add 3 to both of our to all of our x values. Okay, so what is the vertex? Well, let's find out at negative what is that? Negative 3. At negative 3, what is the answer? So at negative 3, I have here I've got negative 3 minus 3, that's negative 6. Negative 6 squared is 36. Okay, but I'm not observing that. I'm observing that y is 0. Here I've got negative 3 plus 3. Okay, that's 0. 0 squared is 0. Once again, I'm seeing what I'm finding here. Okay, that's what I'm seeing. So, um... The vertex will shift to the right from 0, 0 to 3, 0. So every x value is decreased by 3. I am to construct this line right here, because here's the reason I'm doing this. Most people chose one of those two answers. To construct this line right here, I have to have f of x plus 3. Now, look over here to construct this line. What is, look right here. When x is 3, y is 0. Check. When x is, why don't we try x is 4? We should expect y to be 1 right here. 
So why don't we try 4? When x is 4, 4 minus 3 is 1. 1 squared is 1. Bingo. x minus 3. I'm getting this. Now let's try 3. Okay. When x is 3, y is, let's see, 3. Oh, we already tried that. How about 5? Let's do 5. When x is 5, 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So I'm up here. And there it is. So now I'm building this function. You see that? So now I'll put that in uh, pink. So I'm going to make all this pink. These are the pink values. And these are the blue values. So, what happened? What's the axis of symmetry? The axis of symmetry here is x equals positive 3. Right? The vertex will shift to the right from 0, 0 to 3, 0. I did all this work. You do all this work. Okay? So, uh, the rule is you'll have f of x plus some number. This means a shift left by the number. If you have f of x minus some number, this is a shift right by some number. All right, so this is the this is the option we were using. So the vertex will shift to the right from 0 comma 0 to 3 comma 0. Again, if you want the work to count, make your paper look like this. Number 10. Simplify each function using the distributive property and or combining like terms, okay? f of x equals 4x squared minus 4x, open paren, 2 plus x. Well, what it wants us to do, we'll rewrite it. f of x equals 4x squared minus 4x, 2 plus x. Okay, so I'm going to distribute there. So I've got 4x squared minus 4 times 2 is 8, 8x plus uh, negative 4x times x is negative 4x squared. Now look at this. I've got a 4x squared here and a negative 4x squared here. Well, those, those cancel each other out. So I'm left with negative 8x. f of x equals negative 8x. Again, this work must be shown. Now, f of a equals 1 fifth a plus 3 fourths a. It wants me to find a common denominator. All right, so this one was about distributing. Distribute. This one was about common denominator. Okay, so what is the common denominator between 5 and 4? Well, it's, it's 20. So I've got to do 1 fifth times 4 fourths a plus 3 fourths times 5 fifths a. Well, what is that? 1 times 4 is 4 over 20 a plus 3 times 5 is 15 over 20 a. 4 plus 15 is 19 over 20 a. So 1 fifth a plus 3 fourths a equals 19 twentieths a. It's irreducible. So I get b. Right? Again, work must be shown.
number 12. The price of the price P of Takis chips depends on the quantity of chips demanded. If price P and quantity demanded quanti, quantity demanded QD vary inversely and you are given the linear demand function for Takis P of Q equals negative one half X plus nine, what is the price of a bag of Takis chips when the quantity demanded is twelve million bags of chips? All right. So all of this nonsense right here is just a way of saying you have a downward sloping line. And that downward sloping line is given by this equation. So it has a y-intercept of 9 million uh, bags of chips. I think so, right? No, it's price. Nine dollars per bag, okay, just to make sure. Right, my y axis is price, so my y axis is price, and the, this is the uh, quantity axis. All right, price is the y value, quantity is the x value, okay, so nine dollars, nine dollars, okay. And then I've got one negative one half x, so down one over two. All right, good enough for government work. Like that. Okay, so what is the price of a bag of Takis chips when the quantity demanded is 12 million bags? So we, what we need to do is plug in, you know, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I want to know the coordinates of that point right there. Okay? I want to know what is y when x is 12. So I'm just going to plug that into the function. If you want to do it by hand, it's really, really easy. You just say P of 12 equals negative 1 half times 12 plus 9. Well, that's negative 12 over 2, which is negative 6 plus 9. And negative 6 plus 9 is 3. So when x is 12, y is 3, $3 per bag, okay, A. And if you didn't know that, if that was confusing to you, if you don't like that math, go to y equals, clear that out, put this in there, uh, negative alpha y equals, put this in 1 half x, plus 9. And then go to second graph. And what you're looking for is x equals 12. Just scroll down. Are you noticing something? The numbers get smaller. So x is 12, y is 3. You see that little 3 right there? When x is 12, y is 3. So we're right, in other words. This is just a check. And that's what the graph looks like. If you want to see it graphed, you can see a downward sloping line. This is the demand line. And when you get to economics, you'll be studying this. It varies, price and quantity vary inversely. This makes sense. If the price of something goes up, like say, if, if the price of Takis were to skyrocket, you would not buy as many of them. But if the price of Takis were to fall, you would buy more. So it's like as something gets cheaper, you buy more of it. If something gets more expensive, you buy less of it. That's basically the idea of an inverse demand function. Okay, so that's that. Again, draw this out to show me that A is how you got A. I want to see the mental process of how you got A. Number 13. If f of x equals negative 3 times 7x plus 21, what is f of x when x is negative 1 seventh? Okay. Well, we got a couple of options here. 
and I'll show you both. So f of x equals, now we need to do this distribution because I just don't, I can't stand an undistributed number. So that's negative 21x plus 21, three times, a negative three times seven. So now I'm gonna plug in when x is negative one seventh. Okay, so now I'm gonna plug in f of negative one seventh. Everywhere I see an x, I'll put uh, negative one seventh, like that. And so negative 21 times negative one is positive 21 over seven, okay, plus 21. Okay, well 21 divided by seven is three, so that is three plus 21, which equals 24. Okay, oh, it's asking me, I see, so it's asking me what is f of x when x is negative one seventh. Okay. What am I missing? Oh, I never distributed the negative three to the 21, dummy. So this should be negative 63, negative 63, negative 63 negative 63, so that's 3 minus 63. What is that, negative 66? Negative 66. Now what are they saying here? Negative f of x, what is f of x when x is negative 1 seventh? So, Plug in one negative one seventh. You should get negative sixty six. Hmm. What are they trying to get me to do? Oh, they want us to give the function. Is that what it is? Let's see. I've got negative twenty one x minus sixty three. Okay, what is the what is it that they want me to do here? Do they want me to prime factor this? Let's see. They want me to prime factor this. Um, pull out a negative one, and now I've got three times seven x plus three times three times nine, well, well, three times, sorry, three times three times seven. Okay, so um, we can pull out a three. So I'll pull out a three, cross, cross, and that gives me negative three, open paren, seven x plus 21. Okay, that was my original there. What is f of x when x is negative one seventh? f of x equals 3x minus 9. f of x equals 3x minus 63. I think this problem, unless I'm just reading it wrong, I think this problem has an error. I think it should have resolved. 21x. Let me see here. They're not both divisible by 9. They're both divisible by three. Huh. Oh, try pulling out the seven. Oh, let me try that. I'm gonna try pulling out a seven as well. I'm gonna pull out a seven. And that would leave, and put the, put the three back in. All right, let me, I think I get what they're asking me to do here. Let me uh, turn the page this way. So this is complicated. Yeah, I think this was a star problem that I adapted. So if f of x equals negative three, 
I'm 7x plus 21. What is f of x when x is negative 1 7th? Okay. So it's asking me to create a function that would model this behavior. So actually I can pull out of here. I would need first to distribute this inside and then instead pull out a 7. Okay. So here I'm going to distribute negative 3 inside the parentheses. So I've got negative 21x minus 63. And now I want to factor out a 7. I'm going to pull a 7 out, leaving me uh, negative 3x uh, minus 9 inside. So f of x equals negative 3x minus 9. There's one there. Okay. Yep. So I think the answer is C. Although I find that to be a very confusing question. I think um, I think that's a very confusing question. I do. I'm not even sure. I mean, I think it's C, right? But quite honestly, I'm I'm a bit confused by that. Uh, it was an interesting brain teaser anyway. The, I guess the idea here was distribute the factor back into the expression and then factor out another common factor, this time being 7, and see what you get. I don't know what adding this in there, because it seems like it's asking me to evaluate f of x at x is negative 1 7th, which would give me negative 66 as best I could tell. But in any case, I think the answer is C, but I'm, I'm mystified by it. Okay, number 14. What is the range of the shaded region graph below? Okay, range. Well, this is easy. This is inclusive, so I'm starting at range is Y. Okay, range, range is Y. So I'm starting here at 1, and I'm going up to 4. So I've got 1 is less than or equal to, because it's dotted in, y less than or equal to 4. There's the range. Let's see. What is the range of the shade? Oh, the shaded region. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so that is not right. So the shaded region starts here. Okay, so 0, and look, it's dotted, so 0 is less than y. Okay. And then we come to this point, is less than or equal to 1. And, I see what this is, it's a compound inequality. These are compound inequalities. Very interesting. And, now we're starting here, 1 is less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 4. Okay, so that's where that comes in. So where are both of these? Okay, okay the x's don't matter. 0 less, less than y, less than or equal to 1, and 1 is less than or equal to y. That's correct. That's correct. It's not negative infinity. Okay, this is not correct. So it's B. It's got to be B. Those are the, it has both of our inequalities. So this is a compound inequality, okay? Got this one here, and then you've got this one right here. All right, again, show this. Show this work so I know that you know. Number 15, Ben and Hilmer are selling student and adult tickets to their spring band performance. All right, this is a system of equations problem. Ben and Hilmer. Okay, I've got Ben and I've got Hilmer. Are selling student and adult tickets. Okay, so we've got student and adult tickets. 
So this is Ben, this is Hilmer. Okay, something S plus something A equals something. Something S plus something A equals something. All right. Ben sold 10 student tickets and 12 adult tickets for a total of 146. Hilmer sold 15 student tickets and 9 adult tickets for a total of 147. How much did one student ticket cost? Hmm, okay. Well, what could we do? Um, we could solve this system using elimination, um, but that would be highly complicated. And everybody seems pretty comfortable with the matrix editor on the graphing calculator. So we'll just use the graphing calculator and plug this into a two by three matrix. So just uh, get that mapped out here. I've got two rows and three columns. So here I've got 10, 12, 146, and 15, 9, 147. So let's run our matrix program. And how do we get there? We hit second, let me show, second matrix. And then right, right to edit, enter on A, change this to two by three, enter. And then we will put in 10, enter, 12, enter, 146, enter, 15, enter, nine, enter, 147, enter. We're done. Okay, so now second quit. And I will now hit second matrix again, go over to math, and scroll down to RREF. Then hit second matrix, and then enter like that, and hit enter again. And I'm given 105018. So the solution to the system is 5 comma 8. Well, what does that mean? That means that student tickets, student tickets are five and adult tickets are eight. I'm seeing that right here in D. Okay, again, this work needs to be shown. Number 16, what is the domain of a discrete, this is the key word here, discrete, linear function. So the domain the domain of a discrete linear function is going to be discrete. So with a range of f of x equal f of x such that f of x contains uh, negative 2, 6, 18, uh, where y is a uh, element uh, of the real numbers and whose equation is f of x equals negative 4x plus 6. Okay, so in this situation, we are given the y values, and we're asked to find out what the x is when that is the y value. If you wanted to evaluate this by hand, you would simply replace f of x with your range value. There's a range value and you would solve for x, so negative two equals four x plus six. Let me show you, so now let's solve for x. Minus six, minus six, I got negative eight equals four x, divide by four, divide by four, negative two equals x. So I know that one of my discrete x's is gonna be neg negative two, which gets rid of a as a possible answer. Let's try the next one, six, okay? So now I'm gonna put in six. So first I was trying negative two, right? Now I'm trying six. So six equals four X plus six. Now I'll subtract six from both sides and I have zero equals four X. Divide by four, divide by four, zero divided by four is zero. So X equals zero. So my next discrete is zero. 
Well, that gets rid of C. So now these are both the same. I've got two, negative two, zero, and negative two, zero. Let's take a look. It's asking me for domain. Okay, so we've, we've gotten it down to B and D. Domain refers to the X values, so I can get rid of B, because that's the Y values, all right? So it's got to be D. Now, if you didn't like solving it by hand and you wanted to solve this using the calculator, just go to Y equals, get rid of whatever's there, put this equation in, 4X plus 6. Now, if you want to graph it and take a look at it, that's fine. We're going to look at the Y tables by hitting second graph. You might have to hit it a couple times. And now we want to go down to, we're looking for the Y values now. See, usually y'all are looking for the X values. Now we're looking for the Y values or F of X values. So I'm looking for Y to be negative two. So negative two, X is also negative two. Now let me go to six. When y is 6, x is 0. Let me go to 18. When y is 18, x is 3. Negative 2, 0, 3. See, that's how you're doing it. Just remember that this right here, this is the y values. These are the range values right here. So you're given the range, and you're asked to find the domain. You had to know that f of x was y. So that's how you solve number 16. Number 17, what are the zeros of the quadratic function g of m equals m plus 5 times m minus 3? Oh, this is very, very simple now. m plus 5, m minus 3. Set them equal to 0 and solve for m. m equals negative 5, and add 3, m equals 3. There they are. m equals negative 5, and m equals 3. m equals negative 5, and m equals 3. Right there. Okay? Show this. Number 18. What is the equation of a line passing through 6, 4, and negative 3, negative 8? Okay, if I'm going to solve this the old-fashioned way, first I'm going to find the slope, y2 minus y1 over, you knew I was going to solve it the old-fashioned way, x2 minus x1 equals, now y2 is negative 8, minus y1 is 4, over, x2 is negative 3, minus x1, which is 6. So I've got negative 8 minus 4, which is negative 12, over negative 3 minus 6, which is negative 9. Now I can reduce this down. First of all, it's going to be a positive number, because um, negative divided by negative is a positive. But what can I do? Both the top and the bottom are divisible by 3. So I've got, this is going to be positive, I got 12 divided by 3 is 4, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. So 4 thirds is m. So m equals 4 thirds. Now I'll use the point slope formula. y minus y1 equals m, open paren, x minus x1. We're just going to plug in what we have. We'll use these values here. y minus 4 equals 4 thirds, open paren, x minus 6. Okay, so I have y minus 4 equals 4 thirds x minus 24 over 3. And I'm distributing the 4 thirds through the parentheses there. So I've got y minus 4 equals a 4 thirds x 
minus 24 thirds. So why don't I add 4 to both sides? When I add it to the right side, I might as well put it in terms of 3. So I'll put it in terms of 3 by calling it 12 thirds, because 12 divided by 3 is 4. If you didn't know how I did that, just multiply 4 by 3 thirds. You get 12 thirds. 4 times 3 is 12 over 3. So this equals 4 thirds x. And now I'm going to deal with this. Minus 24 plus 12 is minus 12 over 3. So negative 12 thirds, negative 12 thirds, this becomes 4 thirds x. And then we can reduce uh, 12 over 3 to 4, so minus 4. OK, so now let me write my equation. y equals 4 thirds x minus 4. And I need to get it in standard form, so I'll subtract 4 thirds x from both sides. And I'll have negative 4 thirds x plus y equals negative 4. I'm going to have to multiply through everything by negative 3, because I want it to cancel the negative in the first position and the 3, which is what, that's what it'll do. This will leave behind 4x minus 3y equals positive 12, negative 3 times negative 4, positive 12. There's my standard form equation of the line. Pause the video and make sure you can do this because it's a critical Algebra 1 skill and I'm concerned that by relying so heavily on the calculator you don't know how to solve it by hand. However, if you are going to solve it by hand and that totally confused you, hit Stat and then Edit. And then you will type in L1, which are the x values, 6 and negative 3, and L2, which are the y values, 4 and negative 8. And then hit stat, calc, 4. Enter, 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 enter. And you're given 1.33333 uh, minus 4. Now see, I don't know about you, but now I've got to convert 1.33333 into a fraction, right? So this is, uh, how do y'all do that again? Math frac, 4 thirds minus 4. 4 thirds x minus 4. Well, now I'm here. So I guess it did save us some time to get there. So if you can get here, you have to remember how to convert into standard form from slope intercept. So if you use stat edit, you would have gotten here presumably. If you didn't want to use the calculator, which is what you should be going for, right? Then uh, you would need to do this first to get m, then plug m into the point slope formula. So this is the slope, this is the point slope formula and then we convert to convert to standard here. Okay. And that's number 18. 4 thirds x minus 3y equals 12. 4 thirds x minus 3y equals 12. All right. Number 19. Simplify x to the 3 half over x squared and express the answer using radical notation. Radical means square root. So x to the 3 half. Remember, if you have x to the a, here's the rule, the quotient rule for exponents. x to the a over x to the b, you have x to the a minus b. All right. So now we have x to the 3 halves minus 2. So I'm going to write 2 in terms of, look, I'll just write 2. So that's x to the a minus b. 
3 halves minus 2. So I need to rewrite this x to the 3 halves. We're the common denominator. So x to the 3 halves minus 4 halves, because 4 over 2 is 2. So this is x to the negative 1 half power. And now two rules are at work here. You have the reciprocal rule, or the negative exponent rule, which means that we're definitely going to be with 1 over, and then you have x to the 1 half. Now that 1 half power, remember this exponent rule, x to the m over n equals the nth root of x raised to the m power. Okay, so let's plug in what we have. We have x to the 1 half. That must mean the 2 is in the n position. So I've got the square root of x to the first power. So that means I've got the square root of x. All right? So 1 over x to the 1 half equals 1 over the square root of x. Okay, there it is. If you were confused by this, you could have plugged it into um, y1 as x to the, oops, okay, x raised to the exponent of 3 over 2. And then you could have put in a division symbol and then x squared. Right? That would be y1. And then you would plug in to y2 you would test out these values, like uh, x cubed, x cubed would be a, b, you would test out the square root of x, okay, c, you would put in this crazy thing. Now, if you, this calculator can't do that without knowing this trick, so you have to put in open parentheses, x squared, close parentheses, okay, and then you have to put in, oops, I just did it wrong, you have to put in x, and then exponent, and you have to think about this rule, m over n, so uh, the n is 6 and the m is 2, 2 over 6, okay, and then finally, 1 divided by, or if you want me to make it look exactly the same, 1 over the square root of x. And we'll see which, uh, which one gave us. Now these are some of these spit, spit out errors. Look over here. Um, let's find one where they match. Look at x, or look at y1, and then y5. Okay, so y1 at 4 is 0.5, and then y5 at 4 is 1 half, which is the same thing. Let's go back to y1. 0 0.44721 at 5. 0 0.44721. So y5 and y1 are matching up. That's how... You know, if you didn't want to solve it using the, the actual exponent rules, then that's how you would solve it, uh, by plugging them into y1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and testing them. I think just memorizing the exponent rules are easier. Okay, so, and that one would be D. So, number 20. What is the equation of the line shown in the graph below? Okay, well, you only need two points, right, if you're going to find the equation of a line, and you you got one of them right here. 
This is the y-intercept. So that was at 4. So you know that's 0, 4. There's one point. Now you just need another lattice point. That is a place where this thing's crossing these grid lines exactly. Here's one at 5, 6. So 5, 6. Now my stat edit people, you'll be getting to work putting those values in. Okay. Um, if I'm solving it by hand, I would be finding m. m equals y2 minus y1. That's going to be uh, 6 minus 4 over x2 minus x1, 5 minus 0. So 6 minus 4 is 2 over 5. So m is 2 fifths. Now I'll plug that in, y minus y1, which is 0. I'll just put equals, because y minus 0 is just y, equals, uh, oops, I, I uh, made a bit of a mistake there. y1 is 4, not, not 0, sorry. So y minus 4 equals m, which is 2 fifths, x minus x1, which is 0. So that's that's where I'm getting myself confused. So that's where I can just lock it up. Okay, I'm using here the point-slope formula, y minus y1 equals m x minus x1. So it's now I'm going to solve here, uh, plus 4. So I've got y equals... 2 fifths x plus 4. And I just want to get this into... Now look, if you were playing the stat edit game, you would be putting in here 0, enter, 5, enter, and then 4, enter, 6, enter. Then you would hit stat, calc, 4, enter, 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 enter. And you'd have 0.4x plus 4. Then, of course, you would need to go change 0.4 into a fraction. And you'd get 2 fifths. So you'd, now you're back to where we are, 2 fifths x plus 4. Now let's start from here. You'd have to subtract 2 fifths x from both sides. Okay, and you'd have negative 2 fifths x plus y equals 4. we got to think, what can I multiply this whole thing by to get rid of the negative and the denominator? Well, negative 5. Okay, so now that gives me, because I'm going to distribute this to every term, I've got, only thing left is the 2, 2x minus 5y, equals negative 20. There's your answer. Um, oh, it didn't... We. Some of you are probably looking at me thinking, uh, why didn't you just stop there? I thought we had to convert to standard form. So we were done, actually, when we got here. Because if I'm looking at my answer, I see they're all in slope-intercept. So I'm just looking for 2 fifths x plus 4. It's b call it a day there. Sorry about that. Extra work. Never hurt anybody. It's just extra practice. So that is number 20. All right, that's coming in at an hour and 28 minutes. Okay. Remember what our secret word is there. And um, if you're going to turn this in, you want me to give you full credit on a test that you failed. Well, okay, but you need to show me this work. All of it. Okay. You want me to remediate your test that you failed. You need to show me all the work that I just showed you. Okay, That's not too much to ask. So please show me the work. And thank you very much for watching. Okay. Have a great day.